So we're looking at page 62, number 3. It's asking, is there a direction, U, in which the rate of change of the temperature function at 1, negative 1, 1 is negative 3 degrees Celsius per meter? Give your reasons for your answer. Or give reasons for your answer. So let's start off with actually seeing if we can figure that out and then worry about the reasons later. So T sub X, uh, two Y, T sub Y, let's see, I can get a two X here, minus a Z, that's this guy over there too, T sub Z, that would give me a negative Y. All right, that's just focusing on this guy over here. Oops. So, why take the partials? Well, they're talking about a rate of change for a multivariable function. That, that seems to be something that would call for a gradient vector. All right, so upside down delta T of X, Y, Z would be equal to the vector 2y, 2x minus z, and negative y. All right. Now, we could go through, a, I suppose, a, a trial and error approach. It's saying, is there a direction in which the rate of change of the temperature function? All right, so they're asking for a well, I mean, I don't want to state the obvious, but they're asking for a direction, which seems to rely on something related to the directional derivative. All right, so if we go back and just take a quick look at that relationship, we see here that that is the gradient vector dotted against a unit vector. All right, and that unit vector is composed of trig functions. All right, so we can work it that way, or we can go eh, a little bit more of a, let's say, a trial and error approach. All right, it really, really kind of depends on, um, on you know, just kind of how you're feeling about it. All right, but if we're looking for the gradient then that, that, that's simple. It's just a matter of finding the magnitude of this and going from there. If we're looking for an instance in which this would be equal to a value and, and we have to solve for the value of theta and it's not necessarily the gradient, you know, it's not one of those uh, special angles like zero or 180 uh, or, or orthogonal, you know, then, then it could be a trickier situation. All right, so let's uh, let's hope for the best and prepare for the worst. All right, so let's make a substitution because we know it's at one negative one one. So that's going to be negative two. I'm replacing the I'll, I'll, I'll color code it here just so I don't confuse myself. All right, so. X, Y, Y, and Z. So if I'm replacing the X with a 1, I'm going to get a 2 minus the Z, which is a 1. So 2 minus 1 is 1. We'll, we'll get that in a second. And then negative negative one is a positive one. So I'd be looking at negative two, positive one, positive one. All right. So if I want to find the gradient from here, I can do a quick magnitude. So we're looking at 4 plus 
one plus one, so root six. All right, so that doesn't quite get us a negative three, but we do know that that's gonna be multiplied by something that will get us a negative three, all right? So we can go with the idea that, and just going back to this relation, that the directional derivative simplifies down because it is multiplied by a unit vector, simplifies down to this relation here where it's the magnitude of the gradient vector. So the gradient, if cosine was equal to uh, one, but we're, we're, we can't make that assumption, all right? So we're looking for the direction knowing that theta is probably not going to be equal to zero, giving us a cosine equal to a one, all right? So we can now take, and let me just smidge this up, or look for the directional derivative, d sub u of t, one, negative one, one, is equal to root six times the cosine of theta. And they told us, because they said, is there a direction u, that's what we're looking for, in which the rate of change is negative three. So they're telling us that this is negative three. So cosine of theta would be equal to negative three over root six. So then it's just a matter of simplifying, all right, if possible. It's also possible that there's no solution, you know, so that, that's something to keep in mind. Now, I know just by, you know, I'm not even pulling up a calculator right now, the square root of six, I, I, well, I don't know what that is, but I do know it's somewhere between two and three because the square root of four is two, the square root of nine is three, and the square root of six is between the square root of four and the square root of nine. So the, we're looking at something like two and change, all right? So negative three divided by two and change is gonna be a number bigger than one. Cosine of theta, is bigger than, oh, I'm sorry, less than, it's negative, less than a negative one, therefore, we're looking at no solution. Looking at number four, it says if the temperature is given by this function, find the direction from the point in which the temperature increases most rapidly, so that's asking for the gradient, All right, so the gradient, uh, it's asking specifically for a direction, so gradient vector. All right, so it really is just a matter of finding the derivative of each part. So, or derivative with respect to each variable. So 85 is irrelevant. We're looking at the one minus Z over 100 as being a constant multiplier of the whole thing. We're looking at E to the negative, oops, sorry, negative x squared plus y squared multiplied by the derivative of the exponent. Now, actually, um, we may want to consider <clears throat> writing this exponent in its distributed form of negative x squared minus y squared just to make it a little easier to differentiate. So we're looking at negative 2x. All right, so same idea would be for t sub y, first order partial with respect to y. Except, it's t sub y, obviously, and it's multiplied by negative 2y at the end. And then t sub z, well, the e to the negative x squared plus y squared, that's going to now be the constant multiplier, all right, constant multiple, if you want. When we differentiate again, the 85 is going to be irrelevant. But now what we might want to do is think of this whole expression in distributed form.
All right, just to make life really simpler, we'd be looking at e to the negative x squared plus y squared minus z over 100 e to the negative x squared. I'll write it as negative x squared minus y squared. All right, the reason I don't really care how this one is written, and I'll even leave the 85 there, 85 plus, all right, um, the, both parts, the 85 and the e to the negative x squared plus y squared are going to be treated as constants when we're differentiating with respect to z. So I'm really only caring about this piece, right? Yeah. All right, so I'm going to hang on to the e to the negative x squared plus uh, negative x squared minus y squared. Uh, squared. And then I'll differentiate the z over 100. And I'm just drawing lots of arrows here. That z over 100 is really the same as saying 1 over 100 z. All right. It might make it easier to just recognize that its derivative is going to be just simply a 1 over 100. Uh, we do have that negative there, though. So negative 1 over 100. All right, now, if I want to find the path of steepest ascent, all right, or in this case, where uh, the direction in which the temperature increases most rapidly, I want to evaluate at the coordinate. So, T sub x at 2, 0, 50. Same thing for t sub y, t sub z. I'll change those in a sec. All right, so when I'm crunching the numbers here, uh, the first thing I'm going to keep in mind is that any instance in which y is equal to zero, that's our best friend right now. And I got y equals zero right here. Provided that we don't get an undefined expression anywhere else or anything imaginary, this whole thing's going to zero. All right, so we made our lives just a smidge easier there. All right, for t sub z, nothing too crazy there either because the y component's going to zero. So this would be the same as saying negative one over 100 e to the negative, well, we're taking the two and squaring it, so e to the negative fourth power, all right? We could also write that as negative one over 100 e to the fourth if we want, all right? The one that's a little bit more complicated would be the um, the x component. All right. Um, as far as the z part, that that's not too bad. All right. Fifty over hundred is a half. One minus a half is a half. So that part's okay. All right. Uh, the two is getting popped in for the x here and the x here. All right, so just like we got down here, when we plug in a 2 and a 0 for x and y respectively, I'm going to get e to the negative fourth power, but then when I replace the x over here with a 2, I'm just going to get times a negative 4. So we're looking at negative 2 e to the negative 4 or if we want negative two over e to the fourth all right either way all right so again direction is all we care about so i'm looking for the um, the gradient vector in terms of x, y, and z.
negative 2 over e to the 4th, 0, negative 1 over 100 e to the 4th.